Messiah. And what God was saying is, I accept this tabernacle, I will make my residence in this tabernacle. Here in the, the book of Acts, in the upper room, they all assembled, the Holy Spirit came and said, I accept my residence, I accept this tabernacle. But look at this, it just didn't come as fire on, on the whole lot. It separated itself and rested on each one of them. Each person became a temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, because we have an individual calling, He's called us by name, He's also filled us with His Spirit. And lastly, if we go to Ephesians 4, it results in oneness. In the early, body, in the early church, the early assembly in Jerusalem, they had a oneness. And I believe Paul indicates that that's a picture of what is still to come that there is going to be a future oneness because he writes in Ephesians 4. And if you go from verse 11, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers. Notice it's not a one-man show. You have leadership with different ministries and callings because God's plan is a multifaceted one. It's not just teaching. It's not just evangelism. It's the big picture. Paul says, and he's an apostle, so he basically, the way it happens is, if you look at Jesus, he is the apostle. He's the high priest. He is the evangelist. He's the pastor, the good shepherd. All the ministries are in him. Then with the apostles, because they laid a foundation in the body of Christ, they had a great bulk of it. Paul said, I speak in languages more than all of you. There was a big concentration of the gifts and the ministries and the apostles, but to the rest, he distributes individually as the Holy Spirit wills. He gives out. And that's why today you don't see many genuine Apostle Pauls because the gifts are split up like this. It's not a one-man show. And so we have these leaders who are like Bezalel and Aholiab, dedicated to do the work, and as they're doing the work, to impart it into others so that they may do the work. And so it says here in verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ. So you've got this building up of the body that started in Acts, and it's working all the way through church history, through the true body of Christ, but it's heading to a climax. And I don't know if you realize this, but... We think sometimes it's about getting people into the kingdom and then when we've shared the gospel enough and gotten out and the church has got lots of people in it and in the end when things have gotten so bad then Jesus come and rescue everything. Well, Jesus is going to come. He's going to rescue his bride. That's going to happen. But the picture that Paul's giving here is not just carrying on like this, Jesus comes back, perfection. This is is the picture Paul's giving. He says, the building up of the body of Christ, verse 13, until we all attain to the unity of the faith. That is not just something where something steps in and it's something was so bad and suddenly it's become good. This is a sense of the end result of a progression of work. So do you realize whatever you're imparting in this group of people has ramifications for the last the last of the last days. Whatever you manifest in someone's life and you contribute to someone's life and they pass that on to someone else and that continues, in the end, it's going to be shown up when the mud has been splattered away from the, the building and the gold shines forth. Part of the gold that's going to be in that building in the end is going to, because of, going to be because of your contribution to the body in ways that you don't even understand. And so we will attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. And notice in verse 16 it says, from whom the whole body, from Christ, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes for the growth of the body, for the building up of itself to love. And we could say so much about this. And we don't have time. But what I do want to say is this. It's not church in the sense of, I'm going to church now, 
It's my church time. This is a matter of opening our lives to one another and experiencing the Lord working and seeing the Lord work in other people's life and sharing what the Lord is doing in our lives. And as we do that, it creates a dynamic and an atmosphere by which eternity becomes manifested and eternity as we obey God and allow him to have his way because he is a relational God. He's not going to budge and force this thing to happen without cooperation. He wants to bring us in so that his purposes are formulated together with us or fulfilled together with us. As Jesus said to John the Baptist, permitted at this time, for it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And as we do this, eternity, the kingdom of God, is manifested in a foretaste of what will be right now, that that may remain and contribute to the glory of the body of Christ in its darkest hour before Jesus comes back and makes it perfect. That's a big thing. It's something to mull over. But I really do believe the church in the end will be smaller. The chaff will be cut away. The, 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 the dross and the, 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 the filth will be eradicated. Some will be cut off. Some will be just fall away. But what will be left will be the, perf- the not the perfect, but the, the beautiful and the glorious. And that will manifest When the world sins against that greatest glory, it brings on the greatest wrath against itself. That's what that's the way I'm perceiving. You you must just look at that in scripture and and see and discern for yourselves if that is really from the Lord. But I I really believe we're heading for that. I believe that's what Paul had in his mind. He wants to not just get people into the kingdom, but to bring about the obedience of faith. That that faith will be worked out and will result in works and fruit so that this world may never be able to turn around and say, Lord, I never had a chance. I never knew. And God says, I didn't just tell you. I showed you through the lives of these people. Let's pray. And then, Dear Father, I just thank you that you are a relational God. And the body will not be built up without our contribution. And yet our contribution is not enforced. You don't, you don't order us to work. You give us the command and you give us the challenge. But we must do it from a willing heart. Lord, it's these tensions, it's hard to understand sometimes. We sometimes think they're contradictions. But Lord, when your spirit is at the center and your grace is on us, Lord, they fit together just perfectly. Lord, help us to do what we do out of freedom, not out of fear, out of a willingness not out of compulsion, so that there may be a reward in the end. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.